Thank you. Hey, welcome back. Must be Tuesday. Um, we had fun with the 35 Ford uh, last week, uh, and I'm going to find a better way for you to communicate with us on another email that I don't have yet. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk about one of my favorite cars. In fact, it is my car. Um, the Triumph Motor Company uh, started way back before the turn of last century, 1897. They uh, were the Triumph Cycle Company and they made motorcycles, not proprietary engines, but they bought engines from other people. And then by 1907, they started making their own motors, and that was the uh, 550. The, the first Triumph motorcycle with the Triumph own engine was the Model H. And then World War I came along, and uh, they got big contracts for the Model H, and that turned them into a real company so that following the war, uh, 1927, uh, they created a car with all respect to, uh, to uh, Lotus automobiles. They created the Triumph Super 7. If you know about Lotus, they made a Lotus Super 7, but this was the Triumph Super 7. And they kept that alive up until 1930. Uh, and that's when they bought the Dawson Car Company, which was another car company right near where they were manufacturing. Uh, and that started to take off and make them into a real car company. So in 1936, Triumph sold the cycle company and they sold it to a guy named Samster. He owned a company called Ariel, Ariel Cycle Company. If you know anything about motorcycles, you know an Ariel Square 4 is, is one of the holy grails of, of motorcycles. Anyway, so they got rid of the cycle company. They continued making cars and this is semi-fascinating. They made him with an engine designed by a fellow named Donald Healy, as in Austin Healy. Donald Healy designed the better engine for Triumph that they started manufacturing from 39, uh, I think all the way up into the 40s. Uh, but the post-war changes in England and politics and economics in a post-war England were really, really tough, and they went through all kinds of things. They, they were owned by a lot of different companies, and then they eventually ended up part of British Leyland, and they continued with the post-war struggle up until the 50s, and that's when they decided to settle down on the Triumph name. And that's also when they introduced the Triumph TR2. I, I think it was in 1953, Triumph TR2 looks just like this, except the door is longer and it was a smaller mouth in the grill. So other than those two things, they, they look very identical and the chassis were the same. Uh, the TR2s had all drum brakes. The TR3s have front disc brakes. Uh, the TR2 started the sports car craze for Triumph though. And, and they continued to make Triumph TRs up until 1981, and there was a whole succession of TRs. There was the TR2 that preceded this, the TR3, the TR4, the TR250, the TR6, which was a really strong six cylinder, and then the, the wedge-shaped TR7, which they sold a lot of, but it was not a successful car. And then there was a short term for the TR8, and that was really, that was 1981, and that was kind of the end of Triumph Motor Company altogether. They continued to make saloon cars, what we call sedans, but uh, the, the sports cars were the real strength of the, of the Triumph Motor Company. Now, this one is mine, and I've had it for a very, very, very long time. Strangely enough, out of all the cars we go through and all, all of the cars that Kathy and I keep, this is one of her favorites. I have no idea why, but she loves to run around the countryside in this car. So we get to use it quite a bit. We don't take it out much except in the summertime. Uh, the weather gear is okay, but not great. And you feel very confined when you put up the top and clip in the side windows and all of that. So it, it has limited use, but it's fun use. Also, uh, these are mini light copies called Panasports. I prefer these wheels because you have, the way we use the car, if you put the wire wheels on it, which came stock, they had solid wheels and wire wheels. 
and uh, I don't like the wire wheels even though I have a complete set for this car. I got the Panasports that look like the old racing mini lights and that brings up another whole issue. <laughs> It's just my favorite look rather than the stock. Uh, like I said, TR2s, 3s, 250s, 4s. TR4 is a car that I race. Uh, I, I still participate in, in vintage sports car competition, vintage racing. Uh, we race down in, in College Station, Texas at the Texas World Speedway as long as they got it open. Uh, there's another track in North Texas. We go up to Blackhawk. Uh, we'll go over to Topeka. Go wherever, wherever we can to find a vintage race. We'll try and throw in some uh, footage from the last time I was at Blackhawk. I just love that track because it's so technical and, and you really have to keep your eyes really big to do well there. Now, why am I fascinated? Why am I in love with a TR3? Well, growing up, I grew up in Kansas City uh, in the 50s. <laughs> in the 50s and early 60s. And, uh, and that's when I started reading Sports Car Graphic and Road and & Track and all of those magazines. And I started it reading those and reading about racing because there was this guy, 10 years older than me, but I knew about him and I knew some people that he knew and they talked about him. And his name was Maston Gregory, the Kansas City Flash. I mean, the, the stories in Kansas City were legendary. He went to Pembroke Country Day School, um, a very good friend of mine. His son is in Pem Day right now. Um, quite a history. I think they kicked him out, and so he went to uh, Shawnee Mission. But Maston Gregory got a taste for sports car racing back when Carol Shelby had just started racing. Phil Hill had just started racing all of the greats. Well, so I was reading and I was fascinated about this guy that was just 10 years older than me and he was racing all over the world. And he, I think he started out in an Allard, an Allard with a Chrysler engine. So I heard about the Chrysler engine in an Allard from my uncle who ran the Chrysler Rolls Royce store in Kansas City. So all of this stuff is really fascinating to me. And then I met another guy in Kansas City. Uh, his name was Bill Riggs. Bill had a uh, Skelly station on Main Street, just down near the plaza. And uh, Bill helped me get a car for a friend, a Triumph TR3, for a, a, a lady, my best friend's sister. Who cares? Um, but we got her a Sky Blue Triumph TR3 1959. I got to meet Bill Riggs. Big Bill Riggs was a big time racing driver and he was racing, guess what? Boom, TR3. I started helping him and his pit crew. He went to a Lotus 11, and then he went to a 23. So all of a sudden, I was just locked down solid in, in the Triumph lore and in British race cars. And I, I still belong to a British club, the Greater Ozark British Motoring Club, GOBMC. And then in Kansas City, I still belong to the Kansas City car guys. And these guys do not just British, but they do American as well. So. We get involved in all of it. This car is a favorite of mine, 2200 cc's, disc brakes, four speed, plus overdrive, which makes a huge difference. And it's got a fun factor of one. I mean, it's just more fun than a monkey. Besides that, I think the value allows me to drive it a lot more than anything else that I own. I'm not afraid to drive this anywhere, anytime. You can go out and find one, a Condition 3, TR3, you can find one for 10 or 12 grand. And it doesn't cost that much to bring them up to a much higher level. A number two condition would be 12 to 17,000. And a number one, I, well, 18, 20, 25, right in there. I've seen them sell as high as 35. Not very often, and it has to look like a piece of jewelry, but it has happened. So there's kind of, the history of Triumph and my history of TR3s. And if you want to have a real sports car, there it is. Oh, by the way, if you get the chance, there's a book called Totally Fearless. And uh, it was written by Michael Jaycock, no relation. Uh, but Michael's also from the Kansas City area. And Totally Fearless 
is a great book and a great read about Maston Gregory and his race history. So if you've never heard of the Kansas City Flash before, pick that up. You'll really enjoy it. It's a good read. Have a good time. Uh, like us and subscribe and do all those kinds of things. And very soon I'll find a special email so you can send us some questions. I've been getting them in a lot of different ways, so I'll find one way. Thank you. See you next Tuesday.